Hey everybody, welcome back to Sounds Like a Drum and today's brief crash course in ergonomics for the gigging drummer. This is not meant to replace uh, any information that's already online about how to move your body, how to set things up for the best scenario. This is kind of specific to, I'm playing a backline kit, I have 10 minutes to figure myself out and be ready to hit and play my best. So we're gonna kind of go through what that's all about because it's a thing that sooner or later is gonna happen to you if it hasn't already. Here's the scenario. You go to play your show, you're at the venue. It's one of those kind of three or four band night kind of things. And in New York, they butt those shows up really closely together with sometimes a 15 or even 10 minute interval in between them because a lot of the clubs have their own drum set. So there isn't a sort of long, they break down and then you set your stuff up kind of scenario. And uh, this is true of a lot of other places too, but it's particularly true here. And this makes a lot of people uncomfortable who aren't used to it because you're accustomed to your own stuff. You might even have memory locks or hose clamps on it to like make it the same every time. And what do you do if you have none of that? Well, we're just gonna go through how to handle this situation and get to where you need to be the quickest. This is also for people that I've seen who play great at the show, but they could make their own lives a little bit easier if they took a moment to check out the angle of the snare or raise the seat up a little bit instead of just sitting down and going, Poof, let's do it. First of all, so I can get it out of the way, because um, it's in the way, uh, just making sure that the hi-hat stand is not just at the right height, but is also uh, functional for you, meaning that you're taking care to set the spacing of the cymbals the way that you want it. And also for that matter, hi-hat stands are the things that are broken or damaged most often in backline kits in my experience, and they never, ever, ever, ever have a hi-hat clutch. So you gotta bring your clutch always. Um, I even give one to other people in bands that I'm in in case I forget mine and there will be one in the, the dude's guitar case or something like that because if you don't have that you know you're kind of you're kind of boned and beyond that um, just making sure that you don't rush into your setup of the height of the symbols and again the spacing of the symbols so we'll get this out of the way so you can see the rest of what's going on here okay so basically here's the checklist for setting up the kit in no particular order. Seat height, snare height and angle, rack tom height and angle, floor tom height and angle. Kind of the same issue with all of them. And then the last thing is checking out the bass drum and specifically the spurs. Uh, make sure they're both there because some, they might not be. And also the length of the spurs with regards to how tilted toward you the bass drum will be because that's really gonna affect how it feels for you to play it. And if it's tipped away and you're used to it being closer or vice versa, uh, it's just gonna be uncomfortable for the night. You can even get an injury if you play really hard or for a really long time on a kit that's not set up the way that you need it to be set up. So first things first, snare angle. Depending on which grip you use, matched or traditional, this can vary, um, but before we even do that, let's figure out if I'm sitting at the height that's comfortable for me, you know? I always want to mess with the snare first, but the seat is actually maybe even more important than that. So right now, it's really low, and it's also really close to the bass drum. In fact, my knee is almost over my toes right now, which is sort of a stress angle, it's uncomfortable, and it means that to use the pedal, I'm really having to hyperextend the front of my foot, and my shin is already upset about that. So. What we need to do is either push the drum away or back the seat up a little bit. I'll move the drum away a little bit. And make sure also that when your foot is on the pedal, you're not having to twist your foot to line it up with the pedal. If you're having to twist your foot or if you're having to bend your knee in a funny angle to be squared on the pedal, you're gonna get uncomfortable. So now it's in front of me, it's straight away, I'm gonna raise the seat up a little bit. These are all personal preference things. It's just about making sure that you're adhering to your actual personal preferences. Uh, my preference is I sit a little bit high, but not super duper high. Um, basically, I just want my knees below my hips 
a little bit. All right, so now we're at a good height. This is worth doing because it's gonna be better for your back to sit at the height that you're comfortable with. You're gonna be more comfortable playing and expressing yourself and all that kind of things. So now that we're looking at the whole kit, all of the drums are at kind of severe angles. The floor tom is tilted toward me pretty aggressively, which sort of fit how low the seat was before, like maybe the person was in a hurry and tilted it just so that they could get at it from sitting super low. So let's see. I want to be able to hit it easily. I don't want it super high, but I also want to be able to hit it flat to get the best rebound off of it, get the most powerful sound, and also just like not trash the head any quicker than it's going to get anyway. So I'm just going to raise up the leg here, level that out, and then deal with the snare after that. With regards to the ergonomics of this, I want to be able to hit a rim shot on this drum because it's a thing that I like to do. Um, I also don't want to have to raise my shoulder up to hit it. I also don't want to hit myself in the leg when I go to hit it because it's too low. So for me, I just want to be able to lay the stick on the drum like that and hit it easily. Then to match that, I got to look at the snare drum. I play traditional grip 95% of the time. So for me, I similarly want to be able to just lay the stick straight out of my arm comfortably like this and have that be where the rim shot's at. I don't want to have to go down low like that. I also don't want to feel like I need to raise my shoulder up to get a rim shot. So adjusting the angle so that both of my sticks can do that and then adjusting the height. So that I'm not having to drop down. If I lay the stick on the drum in either hand, this is relaxed. It feels like I can just set my hand out like a table. There are some guys who like it even higher than that. I mean, Tony's was pretty high. Todd Zuckerman's another traditional guy who gets it pretty high. Um, but then there are other guys that don't worry about that that much. I mean, I've seen Nate Smith do some low, flat, traditional grip snare stuff that was also killing. So this for me works, and I feel like it takes some stress off of my elbow from having to go low like that to get the rim shot and make your neck tense. Now, got a rack tom. Same thing. It's kind of far away. It's pitched sort of toward me so that if I want to hit it, I'm coming in at this really oblique angle, which we discussed in a previous video. And that is going to feel not great. It's going to sound not great. And if these were my drums, the head would not last as long because I'd be doing that all the time. So again, same deal. Thinking about what I want to be able to do to and with this drum. I like to play rim shots on toms, so I need it flat enough that my arm straight goes into the stick straight so that I can get a clean hit on a rim shot, but it's also not so flat that I have to reach over the rim to hit the head alone. Similarly, traditional grip players sometimes will pitch the rack tom a little to the right, the same as the snare is so that getting a rim shot or a flat hit with this hand is also easy and you're not having to dip it down to hit it flat. And I'm, I'm comfortable with that. It also makes the motion from the rack tom to the snare a little bit easier. If you're a match grip player, you might go for more squared off rack tom and also more squared off snare, which makes sense because both sides are the same. And that means that you're making a nice flat motion from both. This is all starting to look pretty comfortable to me. I feel like I can reach everything, I can get at everything. Right now with this bass drum, I don't really feel like I have to adjust the spurs at all. They're in a good spot, but sometimes you'll find a drum where the spurs are all the way inside, or maybe the spurs are broken, or one of the legs is damaged in a way where you can't extend it all the way. And for this reason, I carry bass drum cowbell mounts with me, just the straight up arm with the clamp on it, which you can actually use as a emergency bass drum leg because you can clamp it to the front hoop to lift that side of the drum up just so that you can have it square and have it not move around when you hit it. And it's a lightweight thing. They're inexpensive. You can even take a foot off of a floor tom leg and ram it on there if you want to. Um, I've also done that in situations where we wanted to use a marching bass drum as part of a drum set. You can just use those as legs and you can put a pedal right on it and then take them back off again. And if you find really old, um, like Leedy kits, Radio King kits, things like that, originally that's how they attached the bass drum legs. They were modular and they actually just clamped to the hoop. And then the height of the front of the bass drum was dependent on where you put them on the hoop. If it's down low, it would kick the drum back. And if you raised them up, it would tip it forward. 
Super easy. Put one in your stick bag, just in case. Because <laughs> it could happen to your kit too. It might get damaged. You never know. The, the other thing besides the hi-hat stand that can really be sketchy on backline kits is the bass drum pedal. And that for that reason, just bring your pedal. Like, just bring it. Um, if you need to get a lightweight one, as I did, like I get these really inexpensive Yamaha like strap drive pedals, like the ones that come with their beginner sets. Those are great. They work great. Um, Mark Giuliano uses them sometimes. Um, Jim Black, a lot of guys that have crazy fast feet, you know. Um, and it'll just give you a comfortable sense when you sit down at the kit that it's not squeaking, it's not doing anything crazy, you've got your beater on there. If for some reason I can't bring a pedal, I do bring beaters. Um, and I'll bring a hard and a felt and sometimes a fluffy one too, just to tune the kick to the room in the same way that you would bring sticks and mallets and brushes and things like that, because it it's important, you know, just for the sound. For reference, if there's anything that you're wondering about that you might want to take to a gig, we have a previous video that pretty much talks about all the things that I take, and there are also some great comments of things that other people take to their gigs down below. With regards to symbols, I didn't put any symbols up because the angle of the symbol is a, is a pretty personal thing, and ergonomically, you just want to not have to work too hard, and that's, in the end, what this is all about. Just like if you've seen anybody online talking about body mechanics and ergonomics and all those different things. This is all to just make things easier for you to play. So if the symbol's really far away, that's uncomfortable and takes more energy than if it's easily reachable with your arm hanging. But then if it's too close, you're having to back up to hit it. Just think about these things when you're setting up the drums. And the more comfortable you get with these issues, the faster you'll be able to get going if you need to do it quickly. You know, people don't ever want to wait around. So anything we can do to make sure that they don't have to wait for us is a good thing. If you want to go deeper into this, and I recommend that you do, um, there are some great resources online. Um, I highly recommend John Lamb's book. Uh, I believe it's called Anatomy of Drumming, which is all about how your body works and specifically how it works for drummers. T tackles posture and joints and health and all kinds of things like that. And then, of course, you know, Davey Illich talks tons about this. It's kind of his, his ball game. So, if you have any concerns about your setup or if you have concerns about things you're experiencing in your body, um, don't wait. Go find it. Get it worked on. Get massage. Get whatever you need to get to make sure that you can do this for as long as possible. And as usual, uh, if you enjoyed, please like, comment, and subscribe. And uh, yeah, let us know if you have any interesting things you'd like to do with your setup or if you have any experiences with ergonomics working for or against you.